What first comes to mind when thinking about Josh Homme is his band, Queens of the Stone Age. Thanks to Josh's love for steady riffs, quirky finger playing, and vulgar songwriting, the band has earned fans all around the world and stands out as one of the best bands of the 2000s. But ever since he was a teenager, Homme has been involved in a series of other bands too, as well as being one of the figureheads of the Palm Desert music scene. Because of the isolated nature of his native rock scene, he never expected to get where he is today. His success was, in many ways, a stroke of luck. Let's take a closer look at how it all happened. Joshua Michael Hami was born in Joshua Tree, California in 1973. He initially wanted to play the drums, but his parents gave him the guitar instead. He mentioned in interviews that he didn't want to play the guitar for the sake of getting girls or money, instead he used it simply to not get bored. Joshua Tree and Palm Springs were small local areas outside of LA. In one of his interviews, Hami explains how the kids would have to come up with their own fun through music, skating and drugs. Now, what was really good about the micro-sized community of Palm Springs in terms of music was that everybody had to come up with their own sound. If you sounded like someone else, the kids your age would make fun of you and bully you. This forced young Hami to instantly look for an authentic guitar sound. He decided to tune his guitar down and use bass cabinets in order to make his guitar sound deep and crunchy. This eventually became the sound of Caius, a band that Hami formed with his friends John Garcia and Bront Bjork in 1987. Up until the early 90s, they would occasionally play at generator parties in isolated locations in the desert. As the band eventually started to play shows in LA as well, they got infamous for their backstage fights with other bands. In many ways, Caius didn't fit into the whole LA rock scene. Most of the bands performing there were either punk or metal bands, and Caius, well, they were a bit harder to define with their endless jam sessions and their groove-based riffs. A friend of Hami and the other Caius members had a dad that played in a band called The Osmonds. He offered Caius the opportunity to record their first EP in a studio, and the studio manager of that studio, Catherine Annie, decided to manage the band. Because of this amazing stroke of luck, they started touring around the local areas of LA just two weeks after Hami had finished high school. And just a few years after that, they eventually went on to tour with Metallica. Their three major label albums, Blues from the Red Sun, Welcome Sky Valley, and The Circus Leaves Town are looked upon today as the cornerstones in the development of the stoner rock genre. It's amazing to see how this band went on to be such a huge influence after just a few years of creating albums and touring. Now, after struggling with the sudden fame, Caius split up in 1995. Hami started to play rhythm guitar for a band called The Screaming Trees for a brief time, but then decided to start another band in 1996. Hami called it Gamma Ray to begin with, but because of a German band by the same name that threatened to sue him, he decided to change the name to Queens of the Stone Age instead. One thing led to another as the band with Josh Hami as the only consistent member became more and more famous. They released an EP, a split CD, a few live recordings, and seven full-length albums over the years. Throughout their collection, you can hear Hami's driving riffs, his quirky ones, some psychedelic stuff, and some heavy stuff as well. One thing that makes Hami's guitar playing stand out is his unique use of scales. He rearranged the blue scale to his own willing. He took some notes out and he ended up with a sharper and more odd sounding scale. Something he's been using ever since he was 13 years old and up until now. Like I'm curtsing, I'm going... <laughs> You know, like, oh, it's really lovely to meet you. There's something cabaret and stupid about it, you know? Now, in terms of songwriting, Hami states that he wants to combine three different components. I like eerie and beautiful and sex to all be combined. An example of something eerie can be found on the early Queens of the Stone Age song, Walking on the Sidewalks, where Hami retells the experiences that he had during a dream where he drifted into space. Go, 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 space. 
His beautiful side comes through in the lyrics of Fortress, a song about loneliness and hardships in life. It's a song that's also dedicated to his children. His vulgar and sexy side is perfectly exemplified on Skin on Skin, a song that leaves very little to your imagination. The Queens have always been Hami's main focus over the last couple of decades, but that doesn't mean that he didn't take the time to work on some other projects as well. He has worked with the Eagles of Death Metal, The Desert Sessions, Them Crooked Vultures, Masters of Reality, and the list goes on and on. In recent times, Hami also made his debut as a radio host and DJ for Apple Beats 1 radio show. Beats 1 lead anchor Saint Lowe recruited Hami, among other artists, to give the radio show a bit more of a personality. And, well, he sure did. Bang. Does that feel good? I knew it would. It's a sexy beast of a show today on the Alligator Hour kind of a foreplay, a touching build-up, if you will, and I know you will. If that was enough, he's also worked as a producer, mainly for Queens of the Stone Age, of course, but also for them Crooked Vultures and the Arctic Monkeys. Josh also seems like an incredibly honest person. To see him in a room with a good interviewer, an interviewer who's very intuitive, like Saint Lo, for example, to see them talk like one friend to another is very impactful. No matter how simple or deep the topic gets, it's always interesting to listen to. You can easily see in Hami's eyes that he's just there to share. Anyway, over the years, Hami has been inspired by a lot of different bands. He made an album with Iggy Pop just a couple of years ago, so I don't think there's a secret that he's a big Stooges fan. He also states The Cramps, The Misfits, and Elvis as his big inspirations. He's always had a thing for the ominous, scary things like monsters and everything that sounds evil. The Doors' 1968 song, Not To Touch The Earth, had a massive influence on him in terms of this. Let's run. Now, Hami keeps quite a huge bunch of interesting musicians in his friend circle, but some people seem to be closer to him than others. One example of this is the Nirvana drummer and the Foo Fighters frontman, Dave Grohl. Now, Grohl first heard about Hami after Caius had released Blues for the Red Sun. He immediately bought a bunch of copies of this album and gave it away to his friends. They both met sometime during the 90s and seemed to hit the right tone ever since that time. After all, Hami invited Grohl to join the Queens of the Stone Age when they were recording and touring their third album, Songs for the Deaf. They also played together in their three-piece band with Led Zeppelin bassist John Paul Jones as Them Crooked Vultures. Their self-titled album sounded a bit like Songs for the Deaf Part 2, in my opinion. It's very heavy, there's some progressive moments, there's some bluesy moments in there, but overall it sounds very similar to Queens of the Stone Age. Now, another artist that has made a huge impact on Hami is Boots Electric, aka Jesse Hughes. He's the vocalist and guitarist for the Eagles of Death Metal, and I think that it's very safe to say that Hami made a huge impact on Hughes to begin with, because when they were children, Hami actually saved Hughes from a bully at school. Their friendship ever since that point on has led to the creation of the Eagles of Death Metal, where Hami contributes by playing the drums and doing additional vocal work. Hughes and Hami are very equal as artists in many ways. They both want to create something sexy and raw. Their sound is less weird compared to the Queen's and more straight to the point in terms of riffs and melody. If we were drug dealers, we would be the drug dealer that you would overdose every time you bought our drugs because it would be that good, TG. A third man that's also made a huge artistic impact on Hami is Nick Oliveri. They first played music together when Caius was still around, and Hami invited Nick on board to his new band, Queens of the Stone Age, when they were recording their second album, Rated R. 
there's a distinct difference between the sounds that these guys make. Oliveri often delivers some brute force vocals that would often give the queens a more punky and almost metal related sound, while Hami would usually add something soft, odd and long-winded to that. As a longtime Joshua Hami fan, I think it's incredible how much fantastic music he's been able to create, and with so many different people as well. In his band, the Queens of the Stone Age, he's been switching members over and over again, and still managed to maintain something of high quality. One thing that I'm very certain of is the fact that Hami will keep on making awesome music in the future, because he never grows tired of trying out new sounds and working with new people. I think this mentality of trying out new things, and his musical momentum in general, is something that hints towards a very exciting future in rock music. Hey guys, if you want to create a YouTube channel featuring awesome video essays like on my channel, and if you also want to avoid the hard work and the mistakes that a lot of people make when doing this, then make sure you click the link in the description below and we can schedule a coaching call so that I can teach you how to do it in a very simple and effective way. I just want to warn you that this is for people who actually want to take action and create an awesome YouTube channel and an awesome online community. So if this is not you, then please do not schedule a call. But if it is you, make sure you take the opportunity, okay? I'll see you on the other side.